Welcome back. While the Belt and Road Initiative aims to improve connectivity, the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, or AIIB, plays a crucial role. One of the missions of AIIB is to use infrastructure to improve economic development in the region and beyond. When it was first founded in 2013, it was assumed to be competitor to the established system of development banks, like the World Bank or ADB. But it soon proved how sorely needed additional funding for Asian infrastructure was. The bank attracted members not only from Asia, but also as far as Europe. The UK also joined as a founding member of AIIB. Earlier, I talked to Sir Danny Alexander, Vice President and Corporate Secretary of AIIB. He told me high standards are a must for the Belt and Road Initiative to be a success. How is AIIB now seeking some of the common ground with the Belt and Road Initiative? What can you do together? So AIB is now a little over three years old. We have now 97 uh, countries who are part of the AIIB. Congrats. And our uh, investment program is growing now $8 billion of, of, of projects. And uh, while, of course, AIB is a multilateral institution, so separate from the Belt and Road Initiative, there are uh, many areas of overlap, especially in promoting connectivity and in promoting high standards. Mm -hmm. Uh, the principles of the Belt and Road, the, 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 the consultation, shared benefits, are good principles. But what matters is the implementation. Let's talk about the implementation and also the high standards you mentioned earlier. About high standards, what exactly are you referring to as one that is enthusiastic, I mean AIIB, to see the future potential of the Belt and Road Initiative? What kind of high standard are you looking for? Well, for the AIB, high standards means both high standards of governance, the way we take decisions, and also high standards for the projects, how we select the projects. For projects, it means making sure that the projects have economic benefits to the country. No white elephants. It makes sh means making sure that we take account of the debt sustainability position of the country, because we don't want to finance a project if that's going to cause additional financial problems for the recipient. We need to make sure that there are high standards for environmental protection, high standards in terms of how you look after the people who are affected, and of course, absolutely zero tolerance for corruption. And then also, we want to make sure that when we finance projects, companies from any country in the world can compete on a fair basis to be part of implementing those projects. For the AIB, that's what high standards means, and we've been working hard also to uh, share that information with companies and partners here in China. Most recently, we had a seminar here in Beijing precisely to discuss uh, how, from an AIB point of view, we go about implementing those standards in the projects that we do in the field all over Asia. You are sharing it with whom? Uh, we were sharing it with representatives from our member countries. We were sharing it particularly with contractors, international contractors from China. Mm -hmm. So we have a very good partnership now with the Chinese International Contractors Association. Some of those companies, potentially AIB, could work with in future. But to do so, then we have to also make sure that, that we're able to have projects which meet the high standards that we have. Mm -hmm. That's good for AIB. It's good for the companies. I think it's also good for uh, how the projects get implemented on the ground, making sure that they really do operate to the benefit of the people who, who should be benefiting. AIIB has been there for three years, more than three years, but it's also a learning process as from its very start until today. The standards and the way of setting up the standards, as you mentioned. So how can the BRI, which is a platform, all countries involved, also learning from the way that AIB has been accumulating about this learning curve since the establishment until today? Well, BRI, as you say, is a platform and many different countries are involved. Uh, many institutions will be developing projects. I think the key is to think about how the projects are selected. Are they selected according to good economic criteria? Mm. And then how are the projects implemented to the benefit of local people? Making sure that, I guess the three basic tests are, is a project economically beneficial? Mm -hmm. Is it environmentally sustainable? Is it socially acceptable? Do the people locally want this project and do they support it? And in a sense, those three tests are what really guides the AIB in terms of then the detailed work that we do with projects. Now, of course, 
Uh, each country will have its own approach, each company will have, have its own approach. But I think there's a lot of evidence now to suggest that these internationally accepted standards are ones that mean that projects can win support mm -hmm. and be conducted in a good way, both for the, the, the lender or the financing institution or country and for the recipients. That's really a win-win. Mm. Talking about win-win, BRI is supposed to be a win-win platform. About that, it's not just developing country and emerging economies. It should also be developed economies. Mm -hmm. For example, we have already see Switzerland to sign the MOU, and also New Zealand and some of the others already jumping on. So uh, what about involving developed economies in the process on AIIB platform, which was originally among developing and emerging economies? Sir Danny. So within the AIB membership, we have a lot of developed countries. That's right. They're very involved in the decision making and in the way that the AIB has developed our standards and our uh, approach. And I think there's a lot of interest in those countries in how they can support infrastructure development around the world, including here in, in, in Asia. Um, there are a lot of opportunities, of course, for expertise from those countries to be shared, um, but also for them to learn, too, from the process of creating the AIB and of the sorts of projects that are, that are implemented. Mm. Talking about some specific projects, what exactly is AIB looking at? Whether it's areas or specific projects or specific countries, specific types of projects that you think could have a potential on the BRI platform? Well, there are basically three types of projects that AIB is looking for. Yeah. Number one, sustainable infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure projects that help countries to be more environmentally sustainable. For example, in the Philippines, we've been financing a project which is helping to flood risk management within Manila. Uh, that's an example. Uh, we've been financing renewable energy projects too, sustainable cities. That's one. Secondly, connectivity, projects which finance infrastructure that help to bring countries closer together. Transport, roads, railways, ports, airports, uh, also pipelines, these kind of, these kind of things. And so, for example, we financed a port in Oman, we financed roads in uh, India, in Tajikistan. Um, and then lastly, but in some ways most importantly, projects which also help to bring in private sector capital because the need in Asia for infrastructure is so huge that government and public sources like AIB cannot finance it by themselves. And so uh, in that case, things like funds, infrastructure investment funds, or private sector projects like a gas-fired power station in Myanmar. These are all examples of the kind of things that we can finance. And again, of course, this shows why high standards are part of the win-win, if you like, because by having the high standards in the project, you ensure that it's bankable, you ensure that it's attractive to the private investors. So the high standards also help to bring more money in, mm -hmm. make it easier for other investors to join the projects. Mm. A lot of the infrastructure investment, particularly in the de least developed economies, are crucial for their development. But at the same time, the amount could be huge, Well, the investment period could be long which means you're going to go through different kinds of political transitions inside those countries. So for AIIB, how are you looking at these moving factors, shall we say? And how is that experience likely to be shared by many countries working on the platform of BRI? One of the benefits of a multilateral institution like the AIIB is that the countries themselves are members of the bank. And so we already have a very good and close relationship with the governments of the member countries that helps us to be able to deal with some of those uh, political risks, uh, if, if you like. Um, but in the end, it's also about how is the project structured, what is the legal framework that exists in the country to make sure that those guarantees can be binding. In some countries, especially low-income countries, they're working now to develop PPP, public-private partnerships, as a way of developing projects which both helps to ensure that the project is not going to adversely affect their debt position, but also means that you have to think very carefully about the revenues that come to give the investors also some security. Mm -hmm. How to work with the private sector, of course, is also an issue. As we know, particularly in developing countries, the private sector is an evolving factor inside mm -hmm. the country, and the relationship between the private sector and the government is another thing. So that is also an area that needs further study, and of course, mutual sharing of experiences, isn't it? In January this year, we published our first Asian infrastructure report. And one of the key subjects was to understand the environment for private sector investment in infrastructure in Asia. 
And actually, we found just what you've said, that um, in the last year, there's been a slight fall in private sector investment going into infrastructure because of some of the perceived political risks, economic turbulence, and, and so forth. Mm. And in a sense, that strengthens the need for organizations like the AIB and the World Bank and others to be active in infrastructure. Mm. Because if we're involved in a project, that helps to give confidence to other investors to come in behind us and means, in a sense, that we should be thinking even more about how can we build up the private sector-led projects that we help to finance. Mm. Later this year, AIB is going to have its annual meeting in Luxembourg. So help us to understand how will this BRI conference, in which AIB will participate and interact bilaterally, multilaterally, actively during the conference, going to have an impact on the discussions later in Luxembourg? Um, the theme of our annual meeting is cooperation and connectivity, uh, talking about particularly Europe and Asia and how they can be connected more closely together. I'm sure that subject will also be uh, brought up during the course of these meetings and so member countries, I'm sure, will bring some of those same ideas to bear in our annual meeting too. Mm -hmm. Lastly, before we go, Sir Danny, we see the world is changing very fast mm -hmm. and the existence of AIIB is a crystallization of the dramatic changes that we are seeing right now. But the question really is, what about the potential of AIIB? Given the geopolitics we have witnessed, given the global debate about multilateralism or unilateralism, and many of the others related to this nature, what do you think? Well, I think the creation of the AIIB shows irrefutably that multilateralism has a big future in the world, how the world will come together to solve its problems. It also shows that leadership in multilateral institutions can come from many different parts of the globe uh, uh, these days. And the AIB, our membership is growing, our business is growing. It will take us time to build up our institution and we have to be very humble in this early uh, stage. But I think the AIB has an important role to play in helping our countries to come together to solve common challenges, infrastructure investment, climate change, these important issues that affect everyone on this planet. Thank you so much, Sir Danny, for joining us on CGTN. Thank you very much indeed for having me.